One of the biggest stresses about weight loss surgery is the unknown of your post-op life. How quickly will I recover? Will I ever feel hungry? How long does the pain last? What does my day-to-day -day life look like? And probably the biggest one is, will I ever feel normal again? By the way, we address all of these questions in my Berry Tail coaching program, and I have spots open right now, especially for post-op patients. So if you're still pre-op, don't worry, I'm not discluding you. I just have more post-op spots than I currently do pre-op. All of the information for how to sign up, what does it entail, is in the description box below. So what I will say is that we all recover differently, and there are going to be things specific to your surgery, i.e. how you manage pain, that I can't answer here, but I thought I would offer you some tips in a post-op world for how to hack the success of your new lifestyle. If you want even more weight loss surgery tips, Disney news, because we're going to have so much new Disney content coming your way soon that blends in with a weight loss surgery lifestyle or mamahood holidays are coming, please be sure to subscribe. We would love to have you as a part of our growing Berry Tail community. And if you like this video and you're interested specifically in weight loss surgery information, please give it a thumbs up so that I know to create the content that you want to see. Let's get started, and we're gonna start with you being fresh out of surgery. It's probably common knowledge. We all know that we should be using an app on our phones to track things like protein, water, etc. Personally, and not sponsored in any way, I like Berrytastic as an app. Did you know that you should also be tracking your supplements and that there is a timer feature on most bariatric weight loss surgery apps? Here's why that's important. There is a time constraint when it comes to eating and drinking in post-op VSG or gastric world. You need to stop drinking 30 to 45 minutes prior to your meal, and then you can resume drinking again 30 to 45 minutes post-meal. As a teacher, it was really hard for me to make sure that I was sip, sip, sipping all day so that I was hydrated. So I started to use the timer on my Berrytastic app. If you don't want to use an app, you can also use the clock feature on your phone. So to combat this, I would set an alarm for, I'm trying to do the math, my lunch was at 11.26. So it would be 45 minutes prior and my alarm would say, stop drinking now. And then I knew how much time I had for lunch because I'm on a teacher schedule in terms of how my work operates my day-to-day -day life. And then 45 minutes after, after 1126, it would be like, get hydrated, girl. Like I would create a super cheesy but motivating note for myself in my clock feature. And then I learned that the app did it. The whole point here is to set various alarms for yourself before and after breakfast, before and after lunch, before and after dinner. So that way you are staying hydrated. You might not think you need these reminders, but you do, you will trust me. Obviously, there are huge benefits for water for the entirety of your body, but when you are freshly post-op, you're also going to struggle a little bit pooping. We're just gonna go there. Any way to make that process easier is better for you. Hydration is key. Set your alarms. A hydration hack, kind of like a bonus tip here, I've mentioned it before, but using something like liquid IV or the little hydration packs that 310 Nutrition has into your water boosts your hydration levels without any additional unnecessary ingredients, and it's a way for you to get more hydrated without needing to take more sips. So if you have access to those, I'll put some links in the description box below to the ones that I like, but they really do help keep you hydrated and extend that time that you can be sipping. This isn't a tip, but because we're friends here, this is just a new life motto that you want to live by post-op. Okay, are you ready? It's a personal one, but it's 100% necessary. Let's get close for this one. Girl, you can now never trust a fart. Never. I know it's gross that I just said this to you, 
but I need you to hear me, okay? I do not know a weight loss surgery patient who hasn't pooped their pants at some point post-op. I'm including myself. <laughs> if you want that story, please let me know. I probably won't put it here, but I would put it in my stories on Instagram strictly for your pleasure. Be cautious, don't trust it. You're welcome. I know this next one is going to sound silly, but I promise it will make you feel more normal faster. You're going to want to invest in, and when I say invest in, I don't necessarily mean anything expensive. I just mean you may want to purchase for yourself smaller plates, utensils, like storage for your food, and possibly bowls. This is for when you're in puree and soft food, specifically post-op. It's likely that in the beginning of these phases, you are only eating two ounces at a time, which looks like nothing and even looks like more of nothing when you put it on a dinner plate. For me, sitting down to eat a meal with my family at first made me feel uncomfortable because of the volume or lack thereof that was on my big plate for dinner. And I just was looking for a heightened sense of normalcy in a time that certainly isn't normal post-op. So I switched to salad plates. I also bought like little silver cocktail utensils. So I kind of looked like a giant holding them. And I bought baby jars with silicone lids as my food storage and things like yogurt went in there. Um, I would even put like water in there to make sure that I was measuring out how much water I was getting. It was helpful. It also means that I couldn't overeat because of the size of the utensils that I was using. It forced me to eat more slowly and it was kind of a spectacle, but it also made me feel like when I was at the dinner table and I had cooked a meal for my family that I was still a part of the experience, even though my utensils were this big. Since surgery three years ago, I have found a company that does this better than my like hodgepodge way of putting these things together. This company makes really pretty ceramic portion control style pieces that feel like minimalistic. They're really chic and pretty. They remind me a little bit of like a Swedish Scandinavian vibe. And they have a plate a bowl, which I wish I had during my liquid phase because there's measured amounts inside the bowl. I'm gonna put a picture of the bowl right here up on the screen and they make food storage options as well. It has occurred to me that I haven't said the name of this company yet. Their name is Uba, U-B-A. And they're a health-minded company with like a minimal chic aesthetic. Yes, yes, I'm so on board for this. This is the name of the company. Uba, and this is my portion plate. Now, if you were using this plate in a regular way, not post-op, this would be all veg. You would have a protein here and probably some type, actually your protein would go here and some type of complex starch may go here. I changed this up for me. I put my protein over here. No, I never fill the whole plate. And then I put my veg in the big spot. And if I'm having any carbohydrates, they go in the little spot. But isn't this pretty? I feel like there are some ideas that I would enhance this for in terms of bariatric surgery exclusively. But this was the prettiest one that I found. It's real. It's ceramic. It can be dishwashed. It's held up, There's a little bit of peanut butter on it because I use it, but I, I love it. I'm hoping to get the bowl. I also really like their food storage containers. I think that that would be helpful in terms of how my life operates for lunch because I thrive on leftovers. So if you are like preparing post-op and you're like, what might I need to purchase in addition to things like protein powders, shakes, supplements, you might want to think about for the first while, smaller things for you to eat with and eat out of. And then as a long-term solution, something like this. I will leave this company linked in my description box. I do think I have a discount code for you as well because they were kind enough to offer that to you guys. So I'm just loving this. It's like a new lifestyle thing for me. Speaking of protein, my go-to snack hack for you is when you want to eat a snack, 
that you always start with the protein first. So this has been like a something that I live by situation now where let's say I'm like, ooh, I really want Ritz crackers. I will pair that with a peanut butter, a cheese, or even like a little bit of tuna fish or chicken salad. So that way I am less likely to eat the slider food first or more of the slider food. I pair it with a protein so that I fill faster. Same thing, sometimes I do this with like celery, peanut butter, and chocolate chips. If I'm looking for something sweet, I'm still getting that hit of sweet, but I'm not just eating chocolate chips out of the bag. I hope that helps. <laughs> Question for you, what post-op questions would you like answered in future videos? Will you put them in the comments below? We're just getting really personal here. I hope that's okay with you. Post-op, there will be times where you have taken one too many bites. I know I shared this on Instagram recently. It happens where you're eating a meal and this is in the like eight, eight plus week mark that you just take one too many bites and you don't spit that last bite out, which I always recommend if you know the moment you put it in your mouth. What will happen is you're gonna get tight in here. There's 20 minutes of pretty intense discomfort and then you usually expel that food out the way that it came in. Recently, like recently in the past two weeks, I went to a restaurant with my family. I was in the mood for a cheeseburger. It comes, I take the bun off, I cut it into quarters. I do all the things I normally do, but I don't often order cheeseburgers out anymore. I feel like I really need to be in the mood for them. Anywho, it's so good. I'm hungry. I eat my little corner and my husband's like, I know you're full and I'm going in for like the second quarter, not the whole thing. Needless to say, I ate too many bites and he's like, go throw up. And I'm like, I don't have to throw up, but I'm like getting sweaty. I can feel it sitting there. I did have to go throw up. And then I felt fine. This also happened at a stop sign over the summer where I was trying to walk off the feeling. Here's the tip. When this happens to you and you're feeling nauseous or you're feeling that tightness here from eating, move your body. I know the hesitancy there. You want to stay totally frozen, give your body a chance to digest, but fight that feeling, get up and walk. It will help you digest. If you're going to be sick, it's gonna help that happen faster so that you can feel better. Like the movement really does help. So fight your body's urge to just lay down and wait. Take those 20 minutes, see if you can change the outcome of that extra bite. Movement also really helped with recovery. So every surgeon, every clinic is going to tell you the same thing, that you need to walk, and you're going to do that immediately post-op, like from your recovery bed. But the way I looked at it was, when I was home in recovery, my first week, I really focused on taking walks around my house. Like I would sit, watch a Netflix show, drink my protein, drink my water, drink my broth, whatever it was that I was consuming. And in every like 22 minutes between episodes, I would loop. And then week two was, can I go all the way around the perimeter of my property? And week three was, can I go around my neighborhood? And then I started doing things like adding ankle weights, adding wrist weights. So that way I was building up my cardio tolerance back. So just a tip, you do need to move. You can create a strategy for yourself or you can do what feels right for your body. I needed a plan. One of my last tips for you is to set a goal and it's not a weight goal. It's a what does healthy mean to you goal. Maybe this means walking up a flight of stairs without being winded. Maybe it means seeing your toes in the shower. Is it running a 5K? Is it riding a horse? Is it hiking a mountain? Is it fitting in a plane seat? Getting off medication you've been on? Chasing after your kids for a longer period of time? This is personal and it can be more than one thing. But I think if you are working toward a non-scale goal, when you hit it or when you see progress, you are inclined to continue and then build out bigger goals for yourself. This has been a revelation of freedom in my life is looking at what are my non-scale victories that I can run a mile quickly or not being winded, that I can do a race, that I'm able to do a certain amount of push-ups, I have more energy without caffeine whatsoever. Like all of these things that I couldn't say 100 pounds ago, 
they encourage me to keep going and trying new things. So set yourself some goals. Quick tip, as soon as you're able to post-op, add in your supplements. Please trust me, everything in your body is being leached to your main organs. Your hair, skin, nails, and teeth enamel will thank you. Add in your supplements when you get the green light to do so. And the last one I'll mention, I will link the video above, but it's all about your loose skin post-op. This is one of the bigger questions I get. I did an entirely separate dedicated video all about my loose skin. I show it to you. It's a whole thing. But the idea is that to prevent the most amount of loose skin, you want to be hydrated, getting your protein in, and doing some type of body or resistance weights as soon as you're able to start. But I'll link that video above and below so that you can reference it. I hope this was helpful for you. This is like a quick and dirty guide, post-op, things that I wish I had known immediately that I hope are helpful. If you are interested on a deep dive in any of these topics, let me know in the comments, but also you may wanna consider a coaching program, certainly not just with me, if you are looking for support post-op, and that could be nutritional, it could be emotional, or it could be lifestyle. So just something to consider. I love you. I am so excited for all the content that's coming out this fall. It's going to be a beautiful season. We will see you next week. Bye, everybody.